Hello, this is Noseman from the Maxon training team. And in today's quick tip, I'm going to show you how to very quickly create some uh, procedural icicles on any mesh object just by using a couple of deformers and fields. In this simple scene, I have a torus under a null. I have a material on the null, and that's because I want to take this torus and make an instance out of it. And if I had the material on the torus, then the material will be inherited by the torus instance. And I don't want that to happen. In any case, this is going to be our icicle object. And I just want it to be an instance. So it's exactly the same as this. I'm going to begin by shrinking it down. And the way I'm going to apply my deformers is uh, using uh, the sibling method. So I'm going to make this a child of a null. I'm going to call this ice, and I'm going to start with a plane effector. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to call it plane shrink, and I'm going to go deformer, points, go to the parameters, and set the z to minus one. There you go. So now it's inside and it's not visible. The next thing I want to do is create the icicles. And uh, don't forget that over here I have a very dense torus. Let's create another plane effector. I'm going to drag it right over here underneath so it executes after. I'm going to call it plane ice and I want it to push everything downwards. So I'm going to go to deformer, make it a point, but then in the parameters I'm going to change my transform space to the effectors transform space. I just want these to go in the minus Y. Excellent. So everything is just moving downwards. What I can do now is go to the fields and control which parts of this are going down. And I'm going to begin with a nice little noise. Let's get a random field. Let's go and change this to something like Luca. And I can make these a bit bigger. Excellent. And I can change the amount we're going down. And you can uh, play around with the uh, parameters here just to make these little icicles look the way you want them to. And of course, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a little folder. And uh, what I'm going to do inside the folder is put a curve field modifier. And I'm going to select the curve and I'm going to contrast this. I don't remember if it's this side or that side. There you go. I'm contrasting it. So now we're getting these nice little spikes. You can play around with this and you can change their shape and do whatever you want just by playing with these things here. But for this case, this looks nice. Now, another thing I can also do is add a couple more fields if I want this to happen in different places. And for example, I can use a spherical field and use my multiply to mask this. So now I can move this around and control where the icicles are going to appear. Of course, I can make this bigger so it encapsulates more of this. And I can control where these are going to appear and how big they're going to be by playing with the gradient. And you can see that I have full control on what's going on and how that is happening. There we go. And that is excellent. Let's go and give them a bit more length. There we go. So now they're a bit longer on that side and I can move this a bit on this side and that looks really, really interesting. And the last thing I need to do is just go in my materials and just drag it on here. And let's go and activate the render. And uh, there you have it. You have procedural icicles on any mesh object. If you enjoy our quick tips, please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications so you never miss another quick tip.